Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. You know, for a split second, I was actually about to sit there and say GH. Um, I don't even know what to start off with first. So, you know what? Let's start off with Kate for a minute because here's the thing. Kate got caught by Chad. While she was sitting there trying to fix her makeup, okay? And Chad walked in there and was like, so, uh, <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's, what's, what's good? What, what, what are you doing right now? You faking stuff? What's, what's going on? So, he knew right off the bat, was like, come on, stop. And she was like, all right, I'm faking being blind. And, you know... He pretty much just kind of picked up on the clues from Jake when Jake was like, yeah, she forgave me. And Chad was like, oh, really? Because that, that, that doesn't sound like her at all. I mean, you just told her that you're in a bed with Gabby and she just, she just forgave you? Okay, bro, you keep believing that. So automatically, he knew that there was something going on. And once he saw that, you know, he already knew. And so he was pretty much asking a question that I was pretty much slamming Kate for. What the hell is wrong with you? You're faking the being blind to, to, to get a man? The grovel? Are you kidding me? Like, what's going on? So Kate was like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm punishing him. And right then and there, I pretty much kind of gained back my respect for Kate. Now, granted, I don't know what's been going on, you know, I don't know the story between him, I mean, between her and Tripp, and it seemed like she was kind of acting like a damn Karen, to be honest, so I'm not exactly a favor of that, but my respect for Kate went back up, um, and honestly, to tell you the truth, I was like, you know, at this point, I'm okay with it, I'm so okay, now granted, is it petty? Yes, um... Is it beneath her? I don't know. Maybe. But let's be very clear about something. Um, the fact that Kate or fake Kate dumped Jake and it wasn't even like a week. Okay? It wasn't even a week. A full-blown week before Jake decided to jump right back in bed with Gabby. And mind you, Kate literally said to Jake, listen, if you want to go back out with her, if you still have feelings for her, I understand. Don't suck, but I understand. Just be honest about it. Be a man about it. And Jake was like, no, I'm in love with you. The minute right after he, he has sex with, with Gabby, he's all like, I've been denying my feelings for you. This, that, and the third. I mean, <laughs> you know, the sad thing is that Kate knew. Kate knew. Kate still liked the Jake. Regardless, and to be honest, uh, I know that Jake is not there trying to do his right for 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 um for Kate, and I know he's not perfect, but damn, I like yo, bro, you you're not really representing us men men out there too well. You just you're not you're not really not really putting your best foot forward. Just. Uh, so, to be honest, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. And Chad's okay with it, too. Chad's like, all right, you know, do you. I mean, he has no love for Gabby whatsoever. And well, with Jake, he's like, you know what? Teach him a lesson, you know, to never underestimate you. And, you know, he... Him and, and Kate has this understanding, apparently. You know, they, they really ride for each other. They're there for each other. Um, and, and you can really see that. You know, and he shook. He was like, yo, listen, we're going to shake on this. You're good. I got your back. And you know what? To be honest, I think that Kate definitely needs an ally. I mean, especially when she's reading her tablet and putting on makeup. Like, like she forgot that she wasn't blind. So, I think an ally would definitely be good, you know. Um, and this is exactly what I'm talking about when I sit there and say the right kind of drama, the right kind of stirring up trouble and stuff like that. You know, with Chanel, by the way, they changed the actresses. You know, she's a different actress, going to be playing Chanel, but same trash-ass character, so whatever. But the point is, yeah, 
No one likes a boring character, you know. Um, but I feel like this is the exact type of trouble, the exact type of of, of whatever drama that I look for in the show. Because you know what? I can understand why Kate is doing what she's doing. I get it. It's, it's you know, again, childish? Yeah. But I get it. And, and Jake, you know, to be honest, I'm like, bro, listen, the fact that she's punishing you and I don't feel bad for you, you know, bro call and everything like that, that, that says something. So I'm cool with it. And, uh, you know, I want to see how this plays out. Now, when Jake gets back and you know, he talks to to Gabby and he's like yeah so I didn't I didn't actually break out with her cause you know she's blind and everything like that and um you know it's just it's not gonna make me feel good and Gabby's like I'm sorry what now I understand exactly where Gabby's coming from and Gabby's like listen I feel bad for her but it's gonna be worse you stringing her along so Jake is like yeah I know but um you know I'm just gonna sit there and just I'm just gonna get out of this whole argument just by having sex with you. And then you'll see my way. And then after he has sex with her, he pretty much is like, so you, you see my way, right? I mean, you know, he, he literally told Gabby that, listen, she's at her lowest point. I can't do that and, and bring her down even further. You know, I'll wait till she's back on her feet mentally and, you know, tell her when I feel like it's right, you know? And, you know, Gabby is like, you know, it sucks, but I understand you're trying to do what's right, what's, you know, the right thing. You know, and I, I think that's probably one of the things that she does love about him is his compassion. Um, I just, <laughs> I'm like, Gabby, listen, we all know that I have not, have not been Gabby's biggest fan. But I'm like, Gabby, I'm just going to be honest. Maybe you should sit there and start thinking, looking elsewhere, because Jake is not exactly the prize that you are making him out to be. Um, and I really sit there thinking for a minute. You know, you're in love with this guy and everything like that. Did you did you check his resume with um, Gwen, with Kate? I mean, literally, Kate fake dumped him like, not even a week ago, and he's already in your bed. Is this the guy you really want to sit there and say that you're in love with, and that, you know, he's your man and everything? You, you sure you want to give him that title? Because I'm not your biggest fan, but I... I, I okay, boom. All right, you do you. Um, Good luck. I hope she doesn't get hurt for the Gabby fans, and, you know, I don't want to see her hurt. I mean, not always like what she does, but, you know... Now let's talk about Sammy and Lucas for a minute because Sammy is just all sorts of pathetic. The famous Hurricane Sammy. I just don't even know where to begin with this whole scene. You know, Lucas called it out for what it is. Sammy, you are EJ's property. No, I'm not. Um, he literally just came in here and said, I'm coming to get, like, I'm coming back for my wife. Like, seriously, sweetheart? Everything that Lucas said, he was right. And Sammy just... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, Sammy was the pathetic, doting wife that she just... Everything that she, she's making excuses for him, you know, she's making excuses for him... She's just acting like what he said and what he did wasn't that bad, minimizing the damage that was in the relationship that was caused by EJ, regardless of the fact that she stuck by him, you know? So, yeah, and she really just came, of course, as the pathetic, doting wife. And it was just one of those things where it's like, you have this man that y'all practically loved each other since kids, since y'all were kids. And although y'all had your ups and downs, you're gonna leave this man who, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even like in the beginning. You're gonna leave this man who's loving and caring and affection, affectionist, whatever, for the guy who just walked into the room and said, I'm pretty much coming back to get my luggage, let's go. And you're cool with that. Like, seriously. 
I, I just, I mean, you know, I don't know, it was back in the 90s, early 2000s with the quote-unquote hot couple, hot couple, whatever, but, um, whatever they were, um, whatever he did to her, and grant that she was a willing participant by still staying with him, um, I mean, it just really kind of says a lot. And, um, he really emotionally brung her down. Um, and of course, you know, even when EJ was sent there saying, you know, she came back from Abby, you know, um, Allie, you know, a fire came back in her. And I'm like, oh, the fire that you extinguish, that you extinguish, I mean, that you put out, I, you know what I'm trying to say, that you put out, though? What a guy. Uh, and this is the person that you said that's your husband. Okay. So yeah, they, they're all going back and forth. Then, you know, he's like, you know, listen, I'm I'm just gonna leave, goodbye, whatever. And you know, Sammy calls Lucas back. Lucas comes over, kisses her. They start kissing, and Marlena, Marlena does something funny. So Marlena walks in, and she's in there, and then she sees what's going on. And I'm like, okay, so you see them making out. You know that she's married. Okay, fine. Sweetheart, you are standing there for a long time. You want to get, like, a video camera or something? Like, what? what is going on? And Yeah, I know. I get it. That's, that's you know, her daughter. But, like, why are you just, like... Something about the fact that she was just standing there for that long, like... And then, granted, she did make a little noise after that. But I'm like, all right, come on. Like, how long was you going to just stand there and just watch your daughter make out with this man for? Before you decided to just... Yeah... <coughs> So anyway, she finally makes some noise, or breathe, or something, and then they both are just like, Oh, hey, uh, <laughs> we were just saying goodbye. Y'all have a new language or something? <laughs> That's how y'all say goodbye to each other? Okay, um, how do y'all say hello? How does that work out? So Lucas leaves, and at this point, you know, Marlene is like, Listen, what, what's going on with you? You know, you seem like you're running away from your problems. You know, you're rushing back to, you know, Italy with EJ, like, you're trying to get away from Lucas, you know, pretty much, um, pretty much being a psychologist to her, you know? I mean, it, between that and the fact that, you know, she's your mother, she knows you, you know? Almost better than yourself at this point, and she's denying and denying and denying. And it's just so pathetic to sit there and watch, but then EJ walks back in and, you know, Sammy's like, all right, so we're going to leave. We're going back to, you know, Italy, whatever. And, um, you know, EJ's like, no, we're, we're going to stay in Salem. So I was like, Sammy, remember your plan to sit there and run off so that way you can cool your feelings off with Lucas? Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen. Which, of course, I knew that was not going to happen. Now, EJ is at the Demera's house and he talks to Tony. And Tony's like, listen... I'm glad you're back, because you gotta get Jake out of that seat, so this way you can, you know, run the family company the right way, and I can make a lot of money without doing any of the work, pretty much. <laughs> That's essentially is what he said. And when EJ was like, so what What happened to Chad? And Tony says some story about, oh, um, you know, he wants to sit there and fix his marriage or whatever, or something like that. EJ was like, so he, he, he screwed up, right? He cheated on his wife? That's that's what he did? Okay, cool. And of course, Tony is just bad-mouthing Jake, like, oh, he's a he's a mechanic, you know? He's a mechanic at heart. He doesn't know what he's doing, you know? He's just a feeb or something like that. Some line that some chick on General Hospital used, but the point is, he is just talking all sorts of trash about Jake to EJ. He's like, yo, you need to run this family company. I don't want to do it. I want to do it. And then there's a question of, you know, it is like, so why would um, Shen allow Jake, who clearly has no biz business experience, who is a mechanic, to run the enterprise? And at this point, I think they both, or EJ was like, oh, okay, so that way Shen can sit there and take over when Jake fails. And, um, you know, unfortunately... I don't know Jake's skills as far as being a business person. 
So I feel like, especially since he was in the day asking, um, Kate, and he was even asking Abigail to sit down and write up some sort of speech or whatever, I feel like it probably would have only been a matter of time before he probably would have ran that company into the ground. So, to be honest, EJ coming back will probably, you know, um, you know, help you out. I mean, it's not like you could sit there and ask, um, Chad for help, because, you know, y'all are getting along at best, so let's not push it. But yeah, um, and of course, you know, EJ sits and talk about Sammy and how he's coming back for her, and he apologized to her, and yada, 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 and he was badly burned, and the burn bring out the darkness in him, and he was cold and distant to her, and all this other stuff like that, and, you know, <laughs> Tardy's like, you know, listen, we're the marriage, you didn't apologize because you wanted to, you apologized because you wanted to get something, and you got what you wanted, and that's pretty much all that really mattered, let's just be clear about that, and of course, EJ didn't even deny, EJ didn't even sit there and try to play over, no, I, I really meant it, I think he partially meant it, okay, but you can tell by that look on his face that, yeah, he, he partially, he partially apologized, you know. I don't know if he actually loves her or he just loves the idea of just having someone to deal with his crap, you know. Because he does, he, you know, you can tell, right? I don't know what their relationship was like before, but the way I see it now is that Sammy is property... And, um, you know, property at best, maybe somebody who's loyal second. So I guess she gets brownie points for that. And Sammy is just so pathetic and just whatever that she'll just sit there and take it. So, awesome. Now the last scene I'm going to talk about that I, I think is the last scene is the Xander, Nicole, and Brady scene. You know... Just want to sit there and point out, and granted, I understand, if we did the obvious, then it wouldn't be drama, and it wouldn't be a soap opera, and it would be boring. So, let's just put that out there as a disclaimer. Nicole, all you gotta do is tell the truth. I mean, at this point, what kind of marriage do you even actually have with Eric, who decided to just keep extending his stay anyway? But you don't want to hurt his feelings because he's the love of your life. Who left? halfway around the world and just kept staying for nearly what eight months now but now I'm just gonna sit there and keep lying and being blackmailed by Xander and that's what he does when she tries to throw him out and Brady's like so um no no I'm not stopping you can I'm, I'm just gonna move just two inches to the to the left and you can just continue to throw out the trash um but at this point Nicole backs Xander by Snitter saying hey listen he worked at Titan. He understands what Gabby's thinking. He looked at her report. Like, we need him on outside to sit there and beat the competition. Um, so, you know, she brings up that. And Brady's like, yeah, I don't really care about that. Um, I don't like him. You don't like him. Why is he here? <laughs> because what you're saying, it, it, it doesn't, like, track at all. So why don't we start this again and make it make sense? Nicole pretty much brings up the fact that, well, um, Brady left her to try to destroy Titan from the inside like an idiot. And I really do mean that because the first time I saw this show and I realized what he was trying to do, I was like, this makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And that's when I started nicknaming him the idiot. Um... But well, yeah, she pretty much brings up that, like, yo, listen, you left me high and dry to do, um, whatever cartoony crap that you were doing at Titan, um, and, you, and, you know, at this point, you want to come back, and I let you come back, and I didn't sit there and, and really kind of hammer it over the head how much you practically screwed me over, so, um, how about you just kind of let this go, let Xana be on the team, and we'll just, you know, we'll work this out. And so finally, Brady's like, you know, yeah, I deserve all of that. So, fine. And Xander walks back in, and, he, and pretty much Brady's like, all right, you can, um, you know, welcome to have you. I mean, I don't like you, but um, 
and I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna fail. And when you do, I'm gonna kick you out the, you know, out the door. But until that happens, um, whatever. Nicole, he's your problem. I'm gonna go get some air. And he walks off. Xander, being on top of the world, decides to, you know, start gloating and stuff like that, and you know, just touching Nicole. And Nicole's like, listen, um, don't, don't, don't put hands on me. He punches, she punches him in the stomach, and um, is like, listen, next time you do that, um, my fist is gonna be a lot lower. So, just don't. And I also tell you, even thinking about that hurts me. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Xander's part of the team. Now, I do think that even with Xander's smugness, I think that he would probably be good. You know, as far as, like, ideas and stuff like that. You know, I think he'd definitely be an asset to... Titan, you know, um, Chloe's not going to be working right away, and, um, you know, three has a better than one, and I think they already was working with three people anyway, so, <sighs> you know, the, the problem with Nicole and her little plan right now is that, okay, so Xander's in, and he has a job, and, you know, Nicole, you did what he asked you to do, what else is he going to ask you to do, you know? Because it's not going to just end with that. And Nicole, I feel like, is so stupid. And granted, I understand this is for new people. But it's like every time, even before when Nicole was like, No, you're not going to sit there and blackmail me. I'm not doing it. And then Xander has to sit there and remind her of, Yes, you are doing what I say because if you don't, I'm telling Eric. Now, the next time that Xander wants something and Nicole sits there and be like, No, I'm not doing it. I already got you the job. You can't sit there and do it anymore. You can't blackmail me. Xander, why don't you sit there and show her why her talking, what she's saying, makes no sense. And then we can all sit there and have a good laugh about it because, you know, Nicole, well, <laughs> she would tell the truth. All this would be over. But since she's a coward and kind of a moron, Xander, you can just explain it to her again. And we'll just be right back in the same boat. I feel like that's actually about it. I don't think that there's really too much of anything else. If I missed anything, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. I had so much stuff to do today that even when I wanted to get out my review, um, I just had a lot of stuff that I had to sit there and kind of catch up on today. So I apologize for it coming out so late. And I want to thank you for watching today and tomorrow. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.